Hi there, I'm Sandy Almock, Bible journaler here on YouTube, and today I'm going to be journaling Proverbs 31. And I've already got my image sketched in here, so while I do my ink tense pencil, watercolor pencil background, I'm going to chat at you a little bit about why I chose this verse today. It's, of course, Mother's Day, so that seemed appropriate for that. But I've always avoided studying this verse, and I kind of hate to admit that. It's always fallen for me into the category of verses about battles in ancient Israel that don't seem to have any application to my life. And the reason is because I'm not a wife or a mom. And that's what I just always thought this passage was entirely about. It's just speaking to women who are wives and how to, how to be a good wife. And that's not me. So I can just walk right past this one. Well, since it was Mother's Day and I wanted to, I really wanted to look at this verse for this day in particular, I went to the web to see if I could find some help in understanding it a little bit better. And I found a blog post by a woman named Nora Conrad, and it is a quite beautiful description of what's in each one of the verses. And she's found the characteristics and the virtues in each one of them and broken it down in a way that even I can understand and realize that there are things that I can grow from in this passage. And I know that that's true. I don't know why my little pea brain didn't think about that before, but you know, sometimes we're, we're not the rocket science scientists that we think we are, but I'm really glad that I found her blog post so that I could understand it a little bit better. So what I've done here for my background is added just some random pencil colors, kind of blues and purples up in the sky. And I kept with a single angle that, that, um, kind of diagonal angle in case I don't smooth out the pencil really well, it'll look like it was intentional rather than looking like it's all scribbled all over the place. And then I'm using a baby wipe to move the color. One of my favorite ways to move mass color all at once, because it also only adds a little bit of moisture to the page and it does a whole lot all at once. So I noticed that I went right over top of my image of the woman and just completely covered it up with the color. You may need to redraw your image if you've wiped off all that pencil, if it's all disappeared. But I'm going to go in with my ink tense pencils again and then start to make my silhouette image of a woman holding up a heart, if you haven't been able to tell what that is. And the way that I got this image, I'm not really great at people. So I went to the web and I looked for a woman holding her arms up in the air and then I adapted. I just kind of made her clothing what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be clearly a woman. So I will add some hair to her, but I'm also giving her a nice teeny tiny waist, which I would like to have, <laughs> giving her a dress, that sort of thing. So it's reflective of the kind of person that I want to draw on here. And I'm also using the same angled pencil strokes. If you decide, if I decided to leave just the pencil and not add any water to it, then that, that angle would still match everything else that's already on here because I didn't didn't worry a whole lot about making my background really smooth. You can get the background smoother, but I didn't feel like doing it. I kind of wanted that look of some motion coming from the sky. Put the paper underneath so that I can draw the ground down underneath of her without coloring down the side of my Bible. And I'm also putting the ground down there so I don't have to draw feet because I am terrible at drawing feet. So that's why I give things ground or grass underneath of them to cover that up so that I don't have to draw the feet much easier. And then I decided I'm going to make the heart red instead of just having a full silhouette. So she's going to be holding the heart up in the air. And the whole point of this was not really about that image. It was more about capturing what I had read in Nora's blog post because it really spoke to me and I wanted to capture that here. So my image is actually not my, my biggest focal point. I really wanted to just have a beautiful background and then write the virtues next to the scriptures when I get to that portion. But it was still kind of fun to draw the image and do the whole big background color. For me, when I'm flipping through my Bible, it also flags something for me. When I see a lot of color, I'm like, oh, I did that passage already. And instead of having a little teeny tiny image, that sort of thing, the color tends to stop me. So I do like to have a nice large flood of color on my pages. So I'm taking my brush with just a little bit of water, not much at all, to go over the pencil. Give her a little bit of hair flying in the wind. Uh, she might be a little misshapen, but that would make it me. 
because <laughs> that would be me misshapen, although I don't have a little tiny waist like that one. And I'm just going to use my brush to move that color down. After it's dry, I am going to add another layer of pencil. And you can add many layers over top of it to make it really, really, really dark if you want super amounts of contrast. It's a really great way to do it is to water out the first layers and then go over it with successive layers as you go and keep adding more. And that will just get darker and darker. Ink tense pencils dry mostly permanent, not as permanent as they do on watercolor paper, but they dry mostly permanent in a Bible. And that means you can keep adding to them with other watercolor pencils. Sometimes you can add another layer and it'll add a little bit more, but if you keep adding water, it's going to keep taking color away as well. The first color that was down there will still keep lifting up. So that's why I recommend the ink tense pencils for that. Then I'll add a little bit more to the heart. I decided I didn't like quite that big of highlights on it. It was a little distracting. And then I took my micron pen and I wrote in all the words next to each one of the verses that Nora had written in her post. And I'll probably even write on the bottom of the page or something her name. So if I want to re-Google that page at some point and reread what she wrote, I can do that and have it right handy in my Bible. But the words that she came up with for each one of the verses were really powerful for me because they're not all about being a wife. There's all kinds of things that I can do in here that the characteristics that I can exhibit and that I can work on in myself. Um, being an early riser. Oh yeah, that would be a good one to work on business savvy, which for me is important. Um, being ex excelling in my work, that sort of thing. There's just lots that you can get out of out of a passage like Proverbs 31. So I hope this video helps you also to be the woman or man that God designed you to be. And you can visit the link down below and let Nora really school you because she really did a wonderful job of laying it out. And I encourage you to read that and maybe send that to your mom today. And that's about it. I will see you guys next week. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. God bless you. Bye-bye.